There are two people sitting next to each other in a class. The girl has a crush on the guy and she says that she loves him in her mind. The girl is super possessive about him and says that if anyone else looks at him, she will kill them because she says he belongs to her. The guy's name is Yukio and he also has a secret crush on the girl. While sitting next to her, he says he loves her and thinks the girl is super cute. The girl's name is Junko, and they both study in the same class. Junko goes to Yukio's apartment and hides behind a wall. Then she says that Yukio is at the soccer practice so now is her chance to break into his apartment because she likes him so much that she cannot resist. Before entering the apartment, she says that she cannot wait to smell his bed and when she somehow opens his apartment door she sees her pictures printed everywhere on the wall of his apartment. She stands there for a while and admires everything. When Junko gets out of his apartment Yukio is hiding behind a wall to stalk her and he manages to take some pictures of her. While taking the picture he says that Junko is too cute and clicks some of her pictures. However, while taking pictures Junko turns around and she catches him so Yukio thinks that she saw him and he hides behind the wall again. He gets scared that what will happen now. Junko stands there for a while and she thinks that how can she tells Yukio that she loves him and does not the proper way to do it. Then she says that maybe she should just confess her feelings to him and tell him straight away that she loves him. Therefore, she goes near him and says to him that she wants to talk but Yukio thinks that he is in trouble and he thinks that she knows now that he has been stalking her and thinks that she is going to tell him to leave her alone. However, nothing happens like that and Junko tells him that she loves him and then she says to him not to reject her. She confesses her feeling to him while taking a knife out of her purse to threaten him not to reject her proposal. Junko brings out her knife and tells Yukio that she loves him and after getting to know that she is in love with him, Yukio also confesses that he loves her too. However, Junko loves him madly and she is super possessive about him so she tells him that she loves him so much that she wants to stab every single woman who Zero even tries to talk to him. After seeing her love for himself, Yukio tells her that he loves her too and he can destroy every single man who lays his eyes on her just for the sake of his love. It is Christmas and they both decide to meet at a spot to enjoy their Christmas together. Junko gets to the spot before Yukio, and she waits for him over there for a while. Then Yukio arrives and he apologizes to her for getting late, and then wishes her Merry Christmas. Junko brought a present for him with her, and she gives her the present saying here is the present, and it is the address of all the girls in their class. Then she says to him that if they talk to him she will kill them all. After listening to this Yukio hugs her and then he tells her that he will only talk to her and will never get near any other girl. They both meet after a few days again and Junko says to Yukio that he looks great in his yukata and they both are enjoying together. Then Yukio tells Junko that she is also looking cute and then he clicks her pictures in his camera. While he is taking her pictures a girl approaches Yukio and says that he is so cool and the girl next to her asks him if they can have a picture with him. However, Yukio is with his girlfriend Junko so he tells them that he will only take pictures with Junko and hugs her tightly in front of them but Junko is super angry at the girls and she says that she is going to kill them all. After a few days, Junko goes to her school and is sitting on her chair while reading a book. Then a guy approaches her and calls her babe and then he asks her what is she reading. Junko then tells him that she is reading a book and asks him why is he curious about it and he says to her that she is cute and then he asks her out and says if they can go to the karaoke with him. Meanwhile, Yukio is also standing right behind them and he is listening to everything he is saying to his girlfriend Junko. Then Junko looks at Yukio and she understands that he is super angry so she says in her mind to him that his angry look is so cute and she tells him to destroy him. Junko is a possessive girl so she cannot see her boyfriend Yukio cheating on her. That is why she tells him to give his phone to her so that she can check and Yukio asks her why she needs to check it. Junko takes out her knife and tells him that she needs to make sure that he is not cheating on her and Yukio gives his phone to her after it without any hesitation. Junko opens the lock and sees in the gallery that Yukio only has her pictures in his favorite album and then she checks his contacts so she finds out that he has only two contacts. Junko finds out that Yukio has 1492 pictures of her saved in his phone and he only has her and his mother's number in his contact list. Junko is texting Yukio. But she isn't getting any reply from him so she gets worried that why isn't he responding to her. While she is thinking about it someone knocks on the door so she gets up and sees that Yukio came to her house to meet her. Then Yukio tells her that he missed her very much and she tells him that she texted him more than 30 times. However, someone else is receiving her messages and she keeps telling Yukio in the message that she will kill him if he doesn't respond but the one sitting next to the mobile is clueless that who is sending these messages. Junko is leaving for somewhere. And as usual, Yukio keeps talking to her and he is taking her pictures while hiding behind a wall. 
Meanwhile, an old man goes behind his girlfriend Chunko so he gets super angry that an old man is following his girlfriend so he goes to him and angrily asks him how dare he lay eyes on his Chunko. Then Junko turns around and finds out that he is fighting with an old man so she says that he is so cute because she likes Yukio's angry look. Some girls are debating on how they can talk to Yukio because they have a crush on him. One of them says that she feels too nervous to talk to him and the other one motivates her and she tells her that she can do it. Then the girl who has a crush on Yukio approaches him and says to him that she thinks he looks really cool. And then after 10 hours she gets kidnapped by Junko. The girl does not where she is so she asks Junko. And she comes near her with a bucket and a knife. Then she says hi to her and tells her angrily that she is Yukio's girlfriend. On Valentine's Day, Junko brings two boxes with her and she tells Yukio to pick one of them. Yukio picks one of the boxes and he thinks that it can be a chocolate from Junko. When he opens the box he sees a finger with blood in there and then Junko tells him that it is the wrong box which contains the finger of the girl who tried to talk to him last night. Then she tells him that she has another box and Yukio hugs her and says to her that she is too cute. At night when Yukio is sleeping, Junko comes up and sits on him. Then she tries to wake him up and when Yukio wakes up he asks her what is she doing here so she tells him that she came here because he was not responding to her messages. She sent him over 500 messages. Then she asks her why he didn't respond to her messages and he tells her that his sister is borrowing his phone. After listening to this Junko says to her why he has a sister when she is there. So she then asks him if he wants to get rid of his sister but Yukio stays quiet after hearing this from her. Another day starts and Yukio goes to meet Junko at her house. While standing out there admiring her house a girl says who is this nice young man and then Yukio says hello to her and tells her that he is here to meet Junko. The girl hugs him and says to Junko that she didn't tell her that she has such a cute boyfriend. The girl is Junko's mother and when Junko sees her mother close to Yukio she gets angry and she says to her mom to let of him. Her mom looks at her and says to her that she has such a scary look. Meanwhile, Yukio is thinking that Junko is so cute when she gets angry and jealous of someone who gets near him. Junko is sitting on a park bench using her phone and a guy approaches her and calls her babe. Then the boy asks her what is she doing and she tells him that she is using her phone and looking at her boyfriend's picture. Then the guy says to her to let him take a look at her boyfriend's picture and Junko says that she loves her boyfriend Yukio too much. The guy who is looking at the picture thinks that Yukio is probably some weakling. Junko tells the guy that if Yukio ever talks to any other girl then she is going to murder him and she will definitely do it. The guy gets tired of her talk so he says that he is out and leaves from there. The guy who left says that the girl he met was really hot, and then he says that why did she have to be all psycho while smoking. The guy is sitting somewhere smoking a cigarette, and Yukio confronts him if he was the one talking to his girlfriend the guy says to him why he cares and calls him a nerd. Yukio gets super angry and grabs his shirt and pins him to the wall. Then Yukio tells him that he is Junko's boyfriend and she belongs to him so he warns him not to talk to her ever again meanwhile. The guy says what just happened. The guy who got beaten up says how can a nerd with glasses be that strong? Yukio leaves and two girls come near the guy and say that he looks so hot with all those bruises and the other girl asks him if he is okay. Takeshi the guy who got beaten up asks them who are they and the girls tell him that they have been in love with him since they came to this school the other girl says that if he can date them and if not they will be really upset. Yukio is sitting in class and Junko comes in and hits the knife on the table then she tells him that she saw a dream of him cheating on her last night so can he explain himself. Then Yukio tells her that last night he was taking pictures of her through the window on his phone while she was sleeping and he shows her the pictures he took. Junko gets emotional after seeing this and then she hugs him tightly while everyone else is watching them. Two girls Eiko and Eri are talking to each other and Eiko tells Eri to look at the guy in the book he is so hot and cool Eri says yes this guy is too cool and then she says that she wants a boyfriend like that and Eri says she also needs a boyfriend like him. Then many months later Eiko says to Eri that there will be lots of delinquents in the school, and Eri says that she hopes so. They both enter the school and find two guys standing together so they think that they are hot. Junko is sitting in a dark room on her phone and the door of her room is knocked by someone. Then she tells them to come in and two girls enter the room saying to her that they need her help and they call her their big sister. Five minutes later Junko understands them and asks if their boyfriend keeps running away from them and then she tells them that if he keeps running away then just break his legs. The girls say that they will do the same and the other one says that Big Sister is smart. Yukio takes Junko somewhere out and then Junko says thanks to him for taking her out and he says that of course he will take her out every time she wants. While they are talking an old guy is sitting behind reading a newspaper and he says that young love is so nice. 
Then he keeps looking at them and Junko says to Yukio if he looks at any other girl then she is going to stab them to death and Yukio says to her if any man looks at her then he will strangle them. The old guy who is watching them is speechless after listening to their language of love. Yukio and Junko went out on a date and Junko says to him that this date was really fun and Yukio agrees with her. Meanwhile, a guy is stalking them and he laughs at them as he seems like he is going to do something bad with them. The guy then comes near them with a knife in his hands and he says to them not to move and to give him his money. Junko asks Yukio what is the old man asking them to do and he says that he is not sure either what did the old man ask for. Yukio and Junko go out to a festival where she tells him to win the bear by playing a game. She tells to him to go and win the bear for her and he says that he will do it for her. Then he goes to play the game and pick up the bear. But the machine loses it so he looks at the machine guy and he says to him that his machine is broken. Then he has a bear for Junko in his hands and Junko says thanks to him and she gets happy. A few girls in the class are debating if they should ask Junko to go out with them. But one of the girls says that they shouldn't ask her because she seems too serious for that. Then one of the girls finally decides to approach her and she says to her that some of the girls are going to karaoke so she asks her if she wants to come or not. Junko tells her that she cannot come with them as she is going out with her boyfriend. Then Junko goes out with her boyfriend Yukio and she sees a girl there with someone so she says that she is way more mature than them and she gets jealous of her. Then after a while, she is holding a bag from which blood is dripping and Yukio asks her why is her bag full of blood and why blood is dripping out of it. After enjoying out there Yukio tells Junko that he will see her tomorrow as they are going back to their own homes. Yukio tells her to get home safely, and she leaves for her home. She uses public transport to get home and while waiting there she reads a book. A guy approaches her while she is reading it and says that her boyfriend back there looked pretty wimpy and asks her if she wants to get with the real guy. After a while at the same area the police report that the guy is dead and has blood all over him. Eri and Eiko are stalking a guy in a class and they say that he is still ignoring them both and one of them says that why would he do that to them. The guy next to Takeshi tells him that there are two girls who are staring at him secretly and Takeshi while smoking tells him to just ignore them. The girls are still worried and confused that why is Takeshi ignoring them and they think the guy next to them told him to ignore them. Takeshi hears them saying this so he tells them that no one is telling him to ignore them so there is no need to blame him for the thing he hasn't done. The girls get excited that Takeshi finally talked to them, and they run towards him excitedly then they ask him if he wants to go out with them to karaoke. The guy whom they were blaming that he told Takeshi to ignore them is known as Johnny. Takeshi finally goes out with them and he thinks that the two girls are just worse and their older sister is the one who is hot. While he is thinking about their older sister two of those girls look towards him angrily and ask him if he is thinking about another girl, and the other girl says to him if he is cheating on them. After seeing their anger Takeshi tells them that he is not cheating on them at all and then he tells them not to electrocute him again. Junko wakes up and gets ready and fresh to go downstairs and sit with her family. Her mom is already up and working in the kitchen, and news goes on that the recent rise in murders in Tokyo has been causing a heightened police presence. While the news is going on in the background, Junko comes out of her room and says good morning to her mom and her mom says her back. Then she tells her that her dad is coming back home from prison soon. Juno's dad is in prison so he is looking at an album in which his wife's and daughter's pictures are attached. The guard comes in and says to him that it is time to go back home. Junko's dad's name is Ishikawa and it seems like he has been in prison for too long now. Then Ishikawa says to him thanks and the guard's name is Wakne. Ishikawa says to him that he will miss all of them, and the guard is scared that he will hurt him so he tells him not to hurt him. Junko runs towards her father saying that she does not like other kids. Then Ishikawa asks her why that is so she says because they are noisy and ugly, and they make dirty jokes which are not clean at all she hates them and she does not want to be friends with them. Her dad laughs and asks her if she wants him to kill all of them and she says to him that no she does not want it because it is bad. At school, some of the guys are bullying Junko and they are pulling her hair apart. Junko keeps screaming to leave her alone as it hurts but the guys are enjoying it and they keep pulling her hair one of them says that she is so creepy and the other one says that they should cut off her hair. While the guys are bullying her, Ishikawa comes there and he calls her daughter and then he gets too angry at those little guys so he abuses them. Ishikawa then goes to meet the parents of those little guys and he tells them that their son seems to have attacked his daughter at school. The guy gets angry and rolls up his sleeves and then he says if he wants money or what. Then he says that he is not going to give him any money and Ishikawa pulls out his sharp knife and says that actually, he had different plans. He kills all of them present there and then he says to the little guy next to him that there is no need to worry as he will not kill him. 
The news goes on television that all eyes are on the courts today, as the sentencing of a notorious serial killer, Kiyoshi Ishikawa, will be announced today and then announce 10 years of prison to him and one of the girls gets up angrily saying that it is corruption as only 10 years of prison is not fair because he killed two innocent families. The police reach Ishikawa's house and then they handcuff him to take him to the prison. Ishikawa says to his daughter Junko that there is no need to worry as he will be back soon when she is in high school. Junko says to him that she does not want him to go but Ishikawa is taken away by the police and everyone asks him why he did that and is he a psychopath. Some of the people also asked him if he regrets doing what he did but Ishikawa says that it is okay and goes to the prison happily. Junko is sitting in the class to study and some of the guys say to be careful of her because she is too scary. Her father killed two entire families because their sons bullied her, and they find it really scary. While she is studying a guy approaches her and asks if he can see her drawing and she asks him if he isn't afraid of her. The guy then tells her that her dad did bad things to those people who tried to hurt her, and then he says that as long as he is nice he will be fine and everything will be okay. Junko looks at him emotionally, and they became friends after that. Junko is sitting in front of the mirror, and she says that she is ready for the Halloween party and then she goes out of her house. She sees someone waiting for her out there in a mask and sees that it is Yukio waiting for her out there. She says to her excitingly to him that he is wearing the outfit she gives it to him and Yukio says to her that it is a good outfit and then he says thanks to her for giving him such a good outfit for the Halloween party. Junko says good morning to her boyfriend Yukio and then asks her what is wrong with her because she isn't smiling and usually she is always smiling. She tells him that her dad will be home today after so many years of being prison. Then Yukio congratulates her and she brings out her knife and tells her that he has to come to the dinner to introduce himself. Yukio looks at her and he says to her that there is no need to threaten him as he will come to the diner. Junko then returns back to her home from school and she tells her mom that she is back. She sees that her dad is also back and her mom tells her to look that who it is Junko's dad says to her that it has been a while that they met. Junko's little sister is also sitting next to him and then her father Ishikawa says to her that he missed her so much and then he says that it must be seven years since she stopped visiting him. Then he says that she didn't visit him for so long because she may be studying hard but Junko does not reply and she says that she is going to go to her room. Junko's mother and her father Ishikawa go out on a date again and Junko's mother says to him that she is so happy that he is out again and he replies that he had to come because he made a promise to her. Then Ishikawa says that he wonders what is up with Junko, and a guy comes from behind and says if he is Ishikawa. Then Ishikawa tells him that it is him and then he recognizes that it is the warden so he says that it is so nice to see him again. Warden tells him that they miss them at the prison though. Yukio is sitting somewhere, and he is looking at his girlfriend's pictures. He loves her so much that he keeps looking at her pictures. After looking at some of her recent pictures he says that Junko is so beautiful but he does not know what is wrong with her because she looks so sad in her recent pictures though. He looks at one of the pictures and sees something so he zooms in to see what it is and sees Ishikawa standing right behind her smiling at the camera. Ishikawa kidnaps Takeshi but he doesn't know why he is being kidnapped. Therefore, he asks him who he is and what he wants from him so Ishikawa says hi to him while he is tied up to a wooden plank and says that his twin daughters posted on their social media that he is dating both of them so he says that he has several questions to ask him. While he is talking to him Junko comes down to the basement with a bag full of blood and he says to her that basement is occupied. Takeshi is sitting somewhere on the bench and he is clueless that how did his life end up like this. Last night he was kidnapped by his girlfriend's father and he made a deal with him that he will only let him go only on one condition that he will never speak or look towards his daughter. He made the deal with him that he will never look or speak to any of his daughters and made a promise as a guarantee. Both Eri and Eiko then come to him while he is thinking about what happened to him last night and they ask him what happened to him and where was he last night. Then they question him if he was cheating on them and then they say if he was cheating then they will hurt him. Both the girls are worried that why is Takeshi not replying and then one of them asks why isn't he saying anything to them. Then the other one says that maybe he is sad and then Takeshi tells them to just leave him alone. The girls ask him what he just said and he tells them angrily to just leave him alone. Then he says that his life has been hell since he met both of them and now their psycho dad threatening him as well and then he yells at them to just get out of life. Both of the girls look at him shockingly. And then Takeshi thinks that what has he done because he made Ishikawa's daughters cry and he is going to kill him now. Yukio is sleeping peacefully in his room and then someone knocks on his window. He then gets up and wears his glasses to see who it is and sees that his girlfriend Junko is here to meet him at this hour of the night. Then Junko tells him to open the window or else she will break it and come in and then Yukio opens the window and lets her in. 
They both go under the blanket, and then Yukio asks her if she is okay now and she tells him that she is okay and says that her legs hurt. They both look at the blood in the laptop and she tells him to look because the blood is so pretty and Yukio says that it seems like she is enjoying the movie. Eri and Eiko go to meet their dad and they ask him why did he threaten their boyfriend. Then they say to him if he hurts them then they will not forgive him. Ishikawa then tells them that they both are too young to have a boyfriend right now and also they cannot share one boyfriend as it is bad. Both of them yell at him that it is not fair because they share everything and says that if Junko gets to have a boyfriend then why cannot they have one. Ishikawa looks at them and then he tells them that they do not have to worry about him and then he says to the girls that they will not date anyone until they get older and the girls agrees with him. Junko comes back home after meeting her boyfriend Yukio and her dad is standing in the lobby so he asks her that where was she as she is getting home late. Junko rudely replies that it is none of his business and Ishikawa says that she might be at her boyfriend's place and then he asks her if she asked him over for the dinner as he told her to do it. Junko goes to the school to meet her boyfriend Yukio and she says good morning to him when she sees him in the morning. Then she tells him that they are having dinner with her family and she asks him if he is coming or not and he tells her that he is coming so there is no need to worry about it. She goes near him and says with love that she is thankful that he is coming to her house for dinner. Ishikawa gets back home from somewhere, and he tells her wife that he is back home and her wife welcomes him back. They both get closer to each other and then Junko's mom asks him if he is excited to meet Junko's boyfriend Yukio, and he says that he is very excited to meet him. Then he says with evil eyes that he cannot wait to meet him and his wife says that she will make something delicious for them at the diner tonight. Yukio reaches on time at the dinner, and they all sit together to talk. Then Ishikawa asks him to tell him why is he dating his daughter and he tells him that he is dating her because he loves her more than anyone in this world. Then Ishikawa asks him if this is the case then would he die for her then and he says that he will kill for her. Junko gets angry and she stabs her knife on the table and says to her dad to shut up. Then her dad says that he was just kidding and covers the situation. While they all are sitting at the dining table Junko's mom tells them that the dinner is ready and Ishikawa keeps his hand on Yukio's shoulder and says that they should go now to eat. While they are getting up the two twin sisters of Junko are watching them secretly, and they say that is Junko's boyfriend. Junko listens to them and she asks them if they have any problem they get terrified so they tell her that they have no problem at all. After eating the dinner Ishikawa says that it was a beautiful dinner and wipes his mouth. Then he hugs his wife and says that she did great cooking as always and then he asks Yukio if he wants to join him in the kitchen and he says that he will surely come and join him in the kitchen. Ishikawa and Yukio go to the kitchen and Junko's mother says that she wonders what are they doing in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Ishikawa says to Yukio that he has several questions to ask him and after 10 minutes they both come out of the kitchen acting like they are friends. Ishikawa keeps his hand behind Yukio and says to him that he is an alright guy and Yukio thanks him for complimenting him. Junko gets up and she thinks that it went better than expected. Yukio is leaving and Junko tells him that she will see him tomorrow and he leaves while saying that he will see her too. While he is leaving Ishikawa is standing behind the wall and he is listening to their conversations. Yukio leaves and says goodnight to Junko and while going home he figures out that someone is coming behind him. He understands that it is Ishikawa behind him and then he says to him that he is not done with him yet and Ishikawa says that he likes his perception. Ishikawa says to him that his daughters are the most important things to him in this world and asks him if he understands it or not. Yukio turns around and asks him if he is going to kill him like he killed the families of those guys who bullied Junko. Ishikawa starts to laugh and says how funny it is as he almost forgot about those nobodies. He keeps laughing and asks Yukio if he thinks that he stopped there and then he says that hell he even started there. Then he says that he has killed hundreds and the best part is that he can walk out anytime he pleased. Then he asks him if he really thinks he spent more than five days locked up in there and Yukio asks him what is he talking about. Ishikawa says to him that he likes him and he will accept him but does not take him for some small-time impulsive killer. Then he says that he is far, far worse than that and says to Yukio that he is a good boy and leaves saying that he hopes he will come sometime soon to visit again. Yukio angrily thinks who is this guy really. Meanwhile, at home, Junko's mother asks the twin daughters where did their dad go and they tell her that he went for a walk and he left a few minutes ago. Ishikawa's wife looks out of the window, and then she tells Junko to come and help her in the kitchen. When Ishikawa gets back home Junko is super angry at him so she throws her knife at him but somehow he didn't get hurt and then he tells her to calm down. The knife gets stuck in the wall, and then Junko says to him how dare he threaten Yukio and runs behind him to kill him because she is super angry at him. 
She tells her dad to stop running, and her dad tells her to stop because she will run the house. Ishikawa's wife is also standing there, and she says that these guys are silly and she laughs at them. In school, Johnny is asking everyone if they saw Takeshi, but everyone tells him that he hasn't been to school for days and says that they do not have any clue where he is. Johnny is super worried about Takeshi, and meanwhile, Takeshi wakes up and does not know where he is. His head also hurts and when he opens the box in which... He sees that he is in the middle of the Sahara Desert and gets worried that what will he does now. Many years ago, on a cold night in Tokyo, a guy has been murdered and some people were standing next to the murder scene. The girl says that they haven't had a political murder in Japan for ages, but why it happened now the guy next to her says that the guy who got murdered was up for election, too. And then he says that he can smell the foul play from miles away. While the girl was standing there looking at the murder situation Ishikawa was pointing a sniper eye on her, and he says that she is adorable. The girl who was at the murder place says to the guy who was with her how can he call this murder a robbery, and the guy says to her that it is what it is, so there is no need to investigate more and said that they should drop this case. The girl's name is Yuno and she says to him how can they drop this case when they know it was clearly a political assassination and nothing was missing from the apartment. Then the guy says to her that it is out of his hands, and tells her if she wants to keep her job then she will have to drop this case. In the Jinza district in Tokyo, the detective goes to a party and while drinking the drink she says that she hates these charity events. Then a guy says to her that he is glad that she could make it here and says that he is glad that she came. Then he says that he donates a lot of money to their department and says that he is glad that she agreed to drop that case. The detective recognizes that it is him the victim's political opponent. Then Yuno stands alone and is trying to enjoy the event. Then Ishikawa approaches her and says that she is right that it was him and Yuno looks at him clueless that what is he talking about. Ishikawa tells her that he is talking about the man she is talking to earlier and says that she is right about him that he had his political opponent assassinated. Ishikawa then gives her a drink but she is still clueless and speechless that how he knows about it what she was thinking. Yuno then asks him how does he know about that and he covers her mouth with his finger and then he tells her to speak low as she is speaking so loud. Then he gets closer to her and tells her that he knows this because he works for him. Then he hugs her and asks her if she is willing to testify if he had killed him and she tells him to slow down. Then he says to her that it will not make a difference because he owns the police and Yuno says damn it after listening to this. Yuno leaves towards the car parking and Ishikawa comes behind her and he asks her where is she going and calls her by her name. After listening to her name him she turns around and asks him how he even knew her name and he tells her that he read her file and she is a good investigator. Yuno tells him to leave her alone and then she tells him that she is going back to the station and she is going to start up the investigation again. Ishikawa tells her if she does that then she will have to die. Yuno turns around and asks Ishikawa if she will die if she starts to investigate the case again and he tells her that it is right. After listening to this that she will have to die before opening the case file she tells him to go ahead and kill her. Then she says that she refuses to stay in a world where corrupt people can become prime ministers through murder. Yuno says this and then starts to walk away but Ishikawa comes behind her, and he holds a syringe in his hands he says that if she feels that strongly about it, then she is the rare one and then he says that he likes her. Ishikawa kidnaps her and ties her to a chair. When she wakes up he says good morning to her, and then tells her that someone is here to see her. The guy who was with Yuno at the event enters the room and says that here they meet again. Then he says to her that he heard that she intends to reopen the case file, and after seeing him Yuno gets super angry at him. The guy then says to Yuno that here is the thing she had several warnings but she ignored them also now she is going to die. The guy then says to Ishikawa to remember to call the cleaning crew after killing her, and Ishikawa says that he will call them. Then he brings out his gun and shoots at the girl. Ishikawa shouted someone but it wasn't Yuno. When Yuno opens her eyes after the gunfire she sees that the politician is on the floor and Ishikawa shot him right in the chest. The politician abuses Ishikawa and the blood starts to come out fast. Ishikawa says sorry to him and then tells him that he does not feel like working for him anymore and shoots at him again. Meanwhile, Yuno is clueless that why he did that and she asks him about it and he tells her to remember what she said that she refuses to live in a world where there are corrupt people everywhere and they can become prime ministers through murder. After this Ishikawa says to her that now that he is dead, he will no longer be prime minister and then he asks Yuno if she would like to have dinner with him and she angrily says dinner. They both go out for dinner and Ishikawa says that there is nothing like a bottle of good California Merlot when the waiter brings him one. Then he asks Yuno if she would like to try some and then he tells her that it is his favorite drink. However, Yuno does not reply to him so he says to her he really does not understand why she is upset and calls her Miss Detective. 
Then he says to her that he did what she wanted and says to her that she should be thankful to him because the corrupt politician she hated is dead now. Yuno tells him that he should have testified against him because killing him just like that without testifying is wrong. Ishikawa says sorry to her. And then he says that they both know that wasn't going to happen. Ishikawa tells her that he knew everyone the commissioner judges and everyone she just has to name it. Then he says that getting them to drop the case was easy and a children's play for him. After sitting at the restaurant for a while Yuno asks Ishikawa if she is free to go or is he going to kill her if she walks away. Ishikawa tells her that of course, she can leave if she wants to go and Yuno gets up to leave. Then he says to her that before leaving he tells them that there are many more corrupt people rotting in this city. Then he says that if he kills more of them will she go on another date with him. However, Yuno does not reply and then he tells her to at least taste the wine before she leaves after all it is his favorite. Yuno decides to taste the wine and after taking a sip she tells him that the wine tastes too good. Yuno is Junko's mother and Ishikawa tells them that is how he met their mother. Yuno while laying her head on Ishikawa's shoulder says to him that he tells the story so nicely. But all of their daughters are using their phones and then Junko says that they know because they have told this story to them so many times now. The twins say that there is one thing they do not get is that the mom in the story is different from the mom they have today. Then Yuno tells them that she thinks it is getting late. And then she tells them to brush their teeth as they have to go to the school tomorrow. One of the twins says that it is just 8 p.m. And Yuno angrily tells her not to talk back. Then Ishikawa asks Yuno if they should tell them the rest of the story someday. And then she says that someday they will for sure tell them but for now she would like to focus on the mission and cleans the gun in her hands. Junko goes out in the cold to meet her boyfriend Yukio. And Yukio asks good evening to her when they meet. Junko tells him to go to his place today. And he agrees with her and says that they can watch a movie over there. She takes him there and a poster is pasted on the wall that several murders have taken place in past few days so the police department attached their number so that anyone can tell them the details if they know anything about it. Junko then asks Yukio if she can come to visit him tonight and Yukio tells her that tonight is not so good she gets possessive again and angrily asks him if he is seeing another girl tonight. Then he tells her that he is not seeing any girl and it is just that his mom is home from work tonight. Junko thinks that Yukio never wants her to meet his mom and then she thinks that he does that because maybe she doesn't want him to have a girlfriend. Then Junko thinks that Yukio's mom needs to die because she cannot meet her love today just because of her. Then Yukio goes back home after meeting Junko and sees the door of his house is open so he thinks that she is there. When he opens the door his mom is in there and she asks him if he has been studying and then Yukio says hello to her. His mom burnt down all of Junko's pictures and posters he had in his room. In Japan, at Narita Airport Terminal 1, Takeshi finally reaches back home and says that he missed this place so much and then he rubs his head on the ground as a gesture of love for his land. The guard standing behind him tells him not to do that here and Ishikawa is sitting right in front of him when he looks up. Then Ishikawa says to him welcome home and then asks him if he had fun. After seeing Ishikawa gets scared and he says that shit he has to go through all this again. Yukio's mom tells him that she got an email from his school that his grades fell by 4%. However, Yukio is worried about Junko's picture and he tries to turn off the fire to save her posters and pictures. His mom then points a gun at him and says how dare he slack off and then asks if he wants her to kill him. Ishikawa along with Takeshi goes to Takeshi's home and then Ishikawa asks him if he isn't going to knock on the door. Takeshi requests him not to hurt his parents and Ishikawa tells him that he will not hurt them and says that why would he hurt them. Takeshi's parents open the door and they welcome him back with poppers and then Takeshi asks them what is going on. His mom hugs him and says welcome back home to him. Then his father says that they knew that he can do it and then he asks Ishikawa if he did well at the internship in Dubai. Ishikawa tells him that he was excellent and shakes his hand with him. Junko goes to the school and looks around but she cannot find Yukio anywhere. Then she keeps thinking that where he could be and then a guy tells him that he is not coming today because he is sick and his mom called in today. Junko thinks about his mom and gets angry at her. Junko cannot control her anger so she decides to visit Yukio's home to see how dare his mom keeps them apart. Then she tries to open the door and sees that the door is unlocked but Yukio's mom opens the door due to which Junko falls on the floor. Then she says to her that she is the girl who has been distracting her son from studies while Junko is still on the floor. Junko gets up angrily and she asks her where is Yukio so Yukio's mom tells her that he is not here anymore. Then Junko asks her what did she do to him and his mom tells her that she was willing to let him live on his own that is, if he could get perfect grades but unfortunately they dropped by 4%. Then she takes out her gun and says that now she sees what has been distracting him. Yukio's mom points the gun at Junko 
and a guy comes running towards her saying that she has a call from the Prime Minister. Yukio's mom's name is Nakamura and she works for the Prime Minister. Then Nakamura lets Junko go and says that she is letting her go only for this time and while leaving she tells her not to speak to her son ever again. Yukio is sent somewhere by his mom and he is locked in a room. He makes a picture of Junko because he misses her a lot and then he tells the guards to let him out or else he will burn down the place. Take she bumps into his friend Johnny and asks him where he was. Then Take she tells him that he has no idea what happened to him and then Johnny says that he has been told that he went on some internship in Dubai out of nowhere. Johnny then says to him why didn't he tell him and Junko angrily passes them so Take she tells her to watch where she is going. Johnny tells him not to say anything because it will not matter. One day earlier Takeshi asks Ishikawa why is he doing all of this and Ishikawa asks him if he wants to know why he sent him to Sahara Desert only to tell his parents that he is in Dubai doing some internship. Ishikawa tells him that he doesn't think that he is a bad guy but he can look past his interest in his daughters. After listening to this Takeshi says that he wasn't even interested in his daughters at all and then Ishikawa says to him that he will take good care of him only if he just looks out for his eldest daughter Junko. One day later Takeshi sits behind Junko in the class to look out for her and he says that it is easier said than done. Meanwhile, Junko is super angry because Yukio hasn't been responding to her messages. Junko goes back home after school and Ishikawa welcomes her back home but Junko is super angry so she tells him to shut up and leave her alone. Ishikawa asks her if she wants him to leave her alone and says that doesn't she wants to know where Yukio is. After knowing that Ishikawa knows where Yukio is she points her knife at him and asks him to tell her now that where Yukio is. Then Ishikawa says that his beloved daughter has such a murderous glare and says that she is truly offspring. Then he tells Junko not to worry as her papa is here to help her and then he says that he can never allow his daughter to be unhappy. Ishikawa then tells her that they should go to find her precious boyfriend. They both go out to find Yukio. And then Ishikawa says to his daughter Junko that this is so nostalgic as they went out for a drive 10 years ago. Then Junko angrily says to him that 10 years since he killed a kid's family and abandoned his own family while he went to jail and Ishikawa tells her not to look at it that way. And then he says that he had to protect her and besides he had to fulfill some final agreements before settling down. Ishikawa takes her to the place where Yukio is kept locked and then he tells her to consider this as a gift from her dad as a homecoming gift and then he tells her to look at the prison they are keeping her beloved Yukio. Then Junko says to her dad why is he doing this and then she says that she will kill all of them and go to jail as well. Then Ishikawa tells her that there is no way he is going to let that happen because none of them will be able to stop her as a friend of his has disabled all of the security cameras and he will keep a watch from another building. Junko goes into the building and points her gun at the receptionist and then she tells her to let her go on the 60th floor or else she will murder her slowly. The receptionist agrees with her then shows her the way to the elevator and tells her to have fun and kill as many people as she wants. While walking towards the elevator Junko thinks that her father has weird friends. When Junko goes upstairs the guards come from behind and they point guns at her and then they tell her to put her knife down. Junko looks at them angrily and asks them where are they hiding her Yukio from her and the guards say that do not want to shoot a girl. Junko keeps asking them to tell her where is Yukio and she says to them to tell her or else she will murder him and the one he loves. The guy tries to shoot but gets hit in the head and dies. The other guys standing there do not know what just happened and they ask each other what was and one of them also dies. Junko asks the one guard left to tell her where is Yukio or else she will kill him too. Meanwhile, Ishikawa is pointing sniper at them and he says that Junko is so cute. The guards are killed by him using his sniper like he used in his past. The guard takes Junko with him to show where Yukio is kept. When she sees Yukio she runs to meet him. Yukio cannot believe it is really her and he tells that he missed her so much. Then he hugs her and says that he is sorry that he let this happen and says thanks to her for coming here. Junko comforts her and says that it is okay and everything is fine and under control now. While they both are hugging each other the guard who brought her here points his gun at Junko and says that her sniper friend cannot see them here and abuses her. Yukio gets angry and asks him what he just called her and then runs towards him saying how dare he abused her. Junko says to Yukio that he is so cool and he takes the gun from the guard. Then the guard tells him that his mother Mrs. Nakamura will kill him if he let him go and Yukio tells him that she will probably torture him if he kills him so he is dead no matter what. Then he asks him again how dare he talk to Junko like that. The guard kneels down and requests Yukio not to kill him and asks him to just stay here. Then he says that his mom will let him go soon and he is sure of it. Yukio asks Junko what should he do with the guard and Junko tells him that she wants to see him beat him to death with his hands. Then she tells him to bash his head until his skull cracks and don't stop. 
She tells him to do it for her, and he does the same and they both leave the building together. After leaving the building, Junko hugs Yukio and says to Yukio that she missed him too much and he tells her that he missed her too. Then he apologizes to her because his mom is so controlling of his life, and Junko says that she will kill her. After seeing her angry Yukio says that she is so cute when she is angry and Ishikawa opens the car door and welcomes them back. While driving back home he asks them if they had fun and Yukio says that Junko had plenty of fun but she tells him to shut up. Mrs. Nakamura is sitting in her office and one of her bodyguards comes and tells her that her son and the girl escaped shortly after and then he asks her if she wants them to bring them in. However, Mrs. Nakamura says that she does not want them to bring them in and she tells them to call a cleanup crew. Then she says that if her son is willing to kill for Junko that it is probably true love and looks into the camera and says to his son to have his frail teenage love. Then she foresays that if his grades drop any further then she will kill Junko herself and breaks the tablet in her hands because she is super angry at Junko for stealing his son away from her and he will not be able to focus on his studies now. 